are back with more news on the between Russia and Ukraine. Welcome to Remark News Channel. We are back with sad new developments. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and like our video as a reward for our efforts. Russia announced that a Ukrainian drone was shot down in the town of Kreyovsk. Three people were injured in the explosion. Russian media has not yet provided information about the details of the incident. The Russian Defense Ministry announced that a Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicle was shot down in the town of Kreyevsk in the Tula region. It was stated that three people were injured in the incident. Russian media has not yet provided information about the details of the incident. The Russian Defense Ministry accused Ukraine of attempting to attack in a statement on its Telegram account. Russian air defense systems deployed in the Tula region provide reliable protection. In particular, the Pol-21 electronic warfare systems interfered with the Ukrainian drone, disabling its navigation system, the statement said. Ukraine has recently denied allegations of armed unmanned aerial vehicles attacking civilian targets in Russia. There was no statement from the Kiev administration on the latest incident. Russia has reportedly carried out hundreds of drone strikes during its occupation of Ukraine. In December, it was announced that Engels Air Base in southern Russia was targeted in a drone attack, injuring three people. Engels is a base that Russia has repeatedly used to launch missile strikes against various targets in Ukraine since the beginning of the occupation. The incident occurred at a time of heightened tensions between Russia and Ukraine. The conflict between the two countries began in 2014, with Russia fighting separatist groups it backed in the conflict that began after Ukraine annexed Crimea. The West accuses Russia of aggressive behavior against Ukraine and supports Ukraine's sovereignty. Ukraine's foreign ministry has called for an extraordinary session of the United Nations Security Council over Russian President Vladimir Putin's decision to deploy tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus. In a written statement, the ministry described Russia's intention to deploy tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus as a provocative step by the Putin regime that undermines the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and the international security system. Pointing out that such an intention worries the international community, the statement said, because Russia declares this while continuing its aggressive war against Ukraine. The statement called on the Belarusian people to prevent the realization of Putin's plan to deploy nuclear weapons and urged the G7 and European Union countries to warn the Belarusian leadership of the consequences if it accepts the deployment of nuclear weapons on its territory. To this end, we demand that an extraordinary meeting of the UNSCV convened immediately, the statement said, adding that Ukraine expects effective action from the UK, China, the US and France including the permanent members of the UNSC against the Kremlin's nuclear blackmail. Yesterday, Russian President Putin stated that they will deploy tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus and said, we will do this without violating our international obligations regarding the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. Alexei Danilo, chairman of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council said, the Kremlin has taken Belarus hostage in the nuclear sense. In a statement made via social media, Danilov described Putin's statement as a step towards the stabilization of Belarus. Putin's announcement of tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus maximizes the negative perception of Russia and Putin in the Belarusian society and the lack of public acceptance. The Kremlin has taken Belarus hostage in the nuclear sense. Stating that they will deploy tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, Putin said, we will do this without violating our international obligations regarding the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. NATO also described Putin's statements as dangerous and irresponsible, although the United States said the nuclear threat was not a cause for concern. A NATO spokesperson told Reuters in a written statement, Russia's reference to NATO's nuclear sharing is completely misleading. NATO allies fully respect international responsibilities a NATO spokesman said in a written statement to Reuters. He emphasized that Russia regularly violates arms control agreements, most recently by suspending the New START treaty. American mercenary defrauded Ukraine and fighting without firing a single bullet, collected $3 million in donations, fled without even paying his hotel bill. The incident that shook Ukraine and the US was uncovered by a journalist on the battlefield. James Vasquez, a former U.S. Army soldier, 
traveled to Ukraine in the aftermath of the Russia-Ukraine war that began on February 24, 2022. James Waskas, who claimed to have joined the International Legion established by Ukraine, became one of the most recognizable faces in the Western media. So much so that many media outlets cited James Waskas as a source and said, the former American soldier is defending Ukraine. However, it turned out that the 49-year-old James Waskas was a fraud, that he had never signed any contract with the Ukrainian army, had never fired a single bullet, and that he used the donations he collected for himself. American journalist Sarah Ashton Srilo trained in the first state and went to the front line to support the Ukrainian army. Sarah Ashton Cirillo, who recorded her frontline experiences, deciphered that James Waskas wasn't even a mercenary. Speaking to the authorities, Sarah Ashton stated that James Waskas did not sign a contract with the Ukrainian army. James Waskas confirmed the allegation and closed his Twitter account. James Waskas, who said he served in the Gulf War and the invasion of Iraq, claimed to have retired from the U.S. Army as a senior master sergeant. Western media described James Waskas as a seasoned soldier. James Waskas, who was exposed as a fraudster, never held a rank, was a private and never fought in a single battle. A Pentagon official told the New York Times that Private James Waskas was an expert in fuel tank repair and had never participated in any combat or war. Another lie by James Waskas was that he had left the army voluntarily. Waskas was discharged from the U.S. Army for violating disciplinary regulations. But James Waskas' lies were not limited to this. James Waskas' biggest lie was that he claimed to have accomplished the impossible in modern warfare. Speaking to the popular U.S. news website Newsweek, James Waskas said the following on March 25, 2022. I hit seven Russian tanks in one day. It was a long day, but we showed the Russians. James Waskas never felt on the front line because he did not have a contract, nor did he shoot a single Russian tank. James Waskas, who took videos from the area after the clashes with a cell phone camera, edited all his videos and collected donations in this way. The amount of donations he collected by appearing as if he was on the front line exceeded $3 million. It was claimed that James Waskas, who did not spend more than $3 million to the Ukrainian army, put all the money in his own pocket. On the other hand, it was reported that James Waskas left the country without paying a single penny on the $4,500 he owed to the hotel he rented in Ukraine and used the minibar to the fullest. We would be very happy if you like our video and subscribe to our channel.